Hey everybody, my name is Paul Lefebvre. I'm part of the worship art staff at Blackhawk. You might see me lead worship sometimes on Sundays, playing the guitar and singing. Anyway, it's great to be with you again. Uh, I'm really excited about what we're, we're going to talk about here for just a few minutes. Um, let's start off by reading in Mark chapter 2. and This is verse 13. Once again... Jesus went out beside the lake. A large crowd came to him, and he began to teach them. As he walked along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, Jesus told him. And Levi got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. When the teachers of the law, who were Pharisees, saw him eating with the sinners and tax collectors, they asked his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said to them, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Let me tell you a story. There's a pastor type guy named Tony Campolo, and he had this really unique experience once when he was traveling to a different city doing a speaking engagement. He got done with his speaking pretty late at night, and by the time he was all finished with what he needed to do, it was almost 3 o'clock in the morning, and he was tired and hungry. So he wanted to go get a, a cup of coffee and something to, you know, something to eat, to sort of veg out a little bit at the end of the day, a very long day. So it's 3 o'clock in the morning, and he walks into this dingy old diner. I don't know if you've ever been to one of these places, but it's the the type of place where everything's a little bit sticky, everything's a little bit greasy, the food's real sort of fatty and oily, you know, and it kind of smells a little bit funny, you know, maybe the light's flickering in the corner, you know, that, that type of place. So he goes in and there's a big guy, you know, smoking a stogie behind the counter, you know, uh, cooking up the food. And he says, hey, what do you want? So this guy, Tony Campolo, orders a, a cup of coffee and a, a donut. And this big guy behind the counter, you know, dishes it up, whatever. So Tony Campolo's sitting there eating, eating a donut, just hanging out, trying to unwind after a very long day. When walks in a whole group of female prostitutes. No joke, true story. A bunch of female prostitutes walk in and sit on either side of this pastor guy. And he's sort of sitting there like, oh, geez, here I am in this dingy diner in the middle of the night with a bunch of prostitutes and this guy smoking a stogie, you know, serving me up a donut. This is weird. So he's just sort of sitting there doing his own thing. And he hears this woman next to him uh, start talking to one of the other prostitutes, one of her friends, I guess. And, and she says, hey, tomorrow's my birthday. I'm going to turn 39. And this other, other woman shoots back at her, hey, well, it's your birthday, you know, big deal. What do you, what do you want me to do, throw you a party? You want me to bake you a cake, huh? And this, this woman says back, no, I'm, you know, I'm just saying, you don't have to be rude about it. I'm just saying it's my birthday tomorrow. And this is what she says. She says, no one's ever thrown me a party before. Why would it change now? That little comment sort of caught this pastor guy's ear. No one's ever thrown me a party before. Why would I expect anything different now? Pretty sad, right? So the pastor guy sits there while these prostitutes are doing their thing, kind of eating, you know, uh, unwinding. And uh, eventually they leave. He waits until they leave. And he, he turns to the guy with the stogie, the guy running the place, and says, hey, do you know these women that were, were in here? And he says, yeah, they come in here every night. Do, do you know the woman who was sitting right next to me? Oh, he's, oh, Agnes, you're talking about Agnes. Yeah, yeah, okay. You know her? She's, she's a regular? She comes in here every night? He says, yeah, every single night around the same time. So Tony says, what do you say tomorrow at this same time we throw a birthday party for Agnes. And this guy with the stogie says, 
you know what? That is a great idea. And he calls, calls a woman from back in the kitchen and says, hey, come out here. This, this guy wants to throw a birthday party for Agnes tomorrow. And this woman says, oh, that is such a good idea. You know, she might be a prostitute. And yeah, you know, we, we know what she does to make her money. But she really is a really good person. So they work it out. Tony says, so you're all right if I decorate in here? And, and you're all right if I, I bring in a, a pick up a cake? And the guy with the stogie says, no, no, no. I'll take care of the cake. So the next night, Tony shows up a little bit early to this dingy diner. And he picked up a bunch of birthday decorations at a Kmart or something. And he decorates the place with streamers and flyers and a big sign that says, happy birthday, Agnes. And the guy with the stogie had baked a cake. Says, Happy birthday, Agnes. And the woman from back in the kitchen, she had spread the word out on the street. Hey, we're going to throw a, a birthday party for Agnes at 3 a.m. You should come by the diner. It's going to be great. So a little before then, the place starts to fill up with prostitutes. I mean, the whole place is full of female prostitutes, Right? And they all sit there and wait for Agnes to show up. And when Agnes walks in, they all yell, Happy birthday, Agnes. It's the first time in her life somebody threw her a birthday party. As you can imagine, she's just like, whoa. So she almost faints right there and then. They catch her and bring her over. And there's a cake. And she can't believe that somebody made her a cake. It says her name on it. And she says to this pastor guy, do we have to cut the cake? He's like, no, I mean, it's your cake. You can do whatever you want with it. She says, well, it's just so beautiful. I really want to show my mom. All right, you can do that. It's your cake. Do whatever you want. She says, no, my mom just lives a couple blocks away. I'm going to take it over and show it to her, and then I'll bring the, the cake back, and we can all eat it. Great. Yeah, go, go show your mom. So she picks up the, the cake real carefully and walks out, you know, with this birthday cake to go show her mom. And when she walks out of the room, there's sort of this awkward silence. It's this pastor guy with all these prostitutes in this dingy diner and sort of like, uh, you know, hey, everybody, what do you want to talk about now? So this pastor guy, Tony, says, uh, why don't we pray for Agnes? So everybody starts to pray for Agnes. Afterwards, the guy, after the prayer, the guy with the stogie comes up and he says, hey, well, you, some kind of, you some kind of preacher or something? And he says it back, well, yeah, yeah, I, I, I am. He says, well, uh, hmm, you know, I don't, I don't, has sort of an air of like, I don't really trust religious people type of thing. He says, what kind of, what kind of church you preach in? And this, this pastor responds by saying, well, I, I preach in the kind of church that throws parties for prostitutes at 3 o'clock in the morning. Isn't that great? I preach in the kind of church that throws birthday parties for prostitutes at 3 o'clock in the morning. You know, we're told from the time we're very young to, to be careful about the the types of people we spend our time with. This is probably something you, you've heard a lot from, from your parents. I don't want you spending time with that person. They're a bad influence. Don't spend time. And all that is absolutely true and good and right. Why? Because we're influenced by the people we spend time with, aren't we? It starts to kind of rub off on us. We shouldn't ignore that good advice from our parents. But we also shouldn't ignore the fact that Jesus was the type of dude that spent time with tax collectors and sinners. He was the type of dude that spent time with sick and hurting people, not just good and righteous people. And he set that type of an example for us. Why? Because just like negative people can influence us, we can influence other people. We can rub off on other people just as much as they can rub off on us. Now, don't get me wrong, you know, we, we shouldn't be in situations where people are doing drugs or, or, you know, watching things or doing things that we, we know we shouldn't be doing and that our parents wouldn't want us to do. Absolutely run from those type of situations, flee those type of situations. But most of the time, that's not really what we're talking about. We're just talking about being willing 
to spend time with people who are different than you are. You know, it's easy for us to get our little click, our little circle, and yeah, I've got my friends, I've got my deal, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna kind of hunker down. Well, Jesus says, invite the sinners into the circle. Invite people who are not like you into the circle. Spend time with them and rub off on them. Influence them. So I think the question for us as we read a passage like this and hear a story like that story is, what kind of a Christ follower do you want to be? Are you going to be the type of Christ follower that is only willing to spend time with people exactly like you? Or are you going to be the type of Christ follower that's willing to throw a birthday party for a prostitute at 3 o'clock in the morning? Let me pray for us. God, help us to be the types of people that you want us to be. Help us to look outside of ourselves and look around at the types of people that we can spend time with, that we can be friends with, that we might be able to influence them with the love, grace, and mercy that you've shown us. In Jesus' name, amen.